Previously on Steins Gate Zero. Hey boy, what's up? <laughs> hey boy! <laughs> boy! Boy, call me boy! What are, you, what are you doing here, boy? Nani? Read the words, boy! What about you talking about? I don't understand! Then he hands him a bow and arrow. Here. Yeah. This was made by your mother. Use it well, boy. How do you know my mom and why did she give you a bow to give to me? I don't, I don't understand. And now back to the fucked up history. Hello! Sneako B, back with some more Steins Gate Zero. We last left off. Okabe got to know uh, um, Amadeus Kurisu a little bit better. And Miyushi here is planning herself a little Christmas party. And we got introduced to some new characters, some of which were actually mentioned in Steins Gate uh, original, um, such as uh, Fubuki. Now, now that you guys sort of brought it up, I, I do remember that. Uh, Miyuri was always bringing up how uh, Fubuki, he, she was making costumes for Fubuki. Apparently, Kaede also got mentioned a few times as well. I don't know if Amayuki here was actually uh, mentioned or not, but uh, she might have been. But good lord, does Fubuki remind me a lot of freaking Chie. Maybe a slightly hornier Chie, because <laughs> she just seems to be one of those girls that gets up behind the other girls and gives them a hug, or maybe grabs her boobies or something. Chie with a pinch of psycho. But yeah, it's been interesting so far. I I, I feel like this thing with Amadeus, though, is is it's not good for, for uh, Okabe. Although I suppose it might help with his motivation to save her, maybe. I don't know, it's kind of uh, uncertain at this point. Uh, by the way, I was confused about some plot points from Steins Gate that I'd sort of forgotten about, and you guys clarify for me. So originally CERN had gotten their hands, like the D-mail that um, uh, Rentara sent, right, in the first game was what set off the chain of events that led to CERN, like getting control of the time machine and taking over the world. But in the timeline with the World War III thing, that happened because uh, Nakabachi stealing the research paper, and also, uh, apparently, I forgot about this plot point, the metal upa that Miri had gotten at the beginning, that was, it actually had fallen into the, the folder to Kreese's paper. So when Nakabachi got, uh, was going to get on a plane, which apparently was uh, destined to crash, uh, which would just kill him and destroy the research. Uh, the metal Upa actually got the flight security to stop him and inadvertently avoid him from dying and getting his research destroyed. So because of that, then I think the Ru I think he ends up selling to the Russians or something, and then the Russians take it, and that's what causes World War III. So something like that. Okay, okay, I understand now. Th thanks for clarifying that. It's been so long. But anyway, uh, last episode, uh, Kid Agvi said, <laughs> Alpha World Line. Nico leads the Japanese voices on. Beta World Line. Nico reads the game himself. Escaping both world lines into Steins Gate. Nico speaks fluent Japanese and reads every line with as much emotion as the original voice actors. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh my god! Don't I fucking wish. That's right. There's a world line out there where Nico can literally imitate every one of these voice actors in perfect fluent Japanese. And it just and I have I can I give even more emotion than them. That's right. I improve on what they did. God, what a great world line that must be. What a talented Nico B. I strive one day to be as good as him. <laughs> oh my God. That gave me such a good laugh when I read that. That would be the true ending of all true endings. Kid Ag Agvi, your hilarious and accurate comment makes you not just our comment of the day, but in fact, our 100th comment of the day. Yes, we have done this already a hundred times. Can you believe it? I've been numbering these as, as we've been going along and uh, you are number 100. So congratulations, Kid Advi. Here's to another hundred more, right? I guess I've really enjoyed this though. I've really enjoyed adding this segment to uh, my videos. It's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I love just, I mean, I always read your comments beforehand, but uh, I think I like just kind of shouting them out like this and uh, makes me feel more connected to you guys, and I think you guys, uh, uh, hopefully, like, you know, me bringing up your comments and video and stuff, so. Also, I think it, it's led to uh, an even better comment section, so it's, uh, it's, it's been good, I think. This is, uh, it's been a welcome addition. But okay, so Miyushi's now invited all three of the girls to the party. Uh, I guess Yuki, Yuki says she's gonna go, I think, but she was sort of reluctant about it for some reason. I'm not sure if we know why, but it'll be interesting to see, uh, their, their f the first meeting between her and Dara, right? Because I, I doubt they've met yet. And I'm, I'm guessing that, uh, Suzuwa hasn't, I mean, she didn't tell Daru. I, I don't know if, uh, they, they know her last name. <laughs> if they do, then that might, may, might be a slight problem, because then they probably could piece it together, but, uh, I guess we'll see. All right. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, then she runs over and also grabs Maria's boobs. <laughs> I like how she says that with a big smile. Don't talk like Dara does. Dara's so horny. <laughs> I actually heard the word head tie in there. <laughs> to that perverted gentleman. Oh my god, please do it, Miyuri. That would be adorable. Oh, please do it. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I, I couldn't remember if, that, if I was thinking of um, Sumugi or Miyuri, who was like, I don't wear the clothes that I make. Actually, it might be both. But I, I, I thought I remember Miyuri saying that. Um, but they like they may only make the clothes, but they don't wear them themselves. Yes, and also Niko-san. Uh, actually, I'll be curious. You, you guys told me there are multiple endings to this game, which doesn't surprise me. I mean, it's a visual novel. It's almost like a requisite for any visual novel these days. And, you know... Going off what Steinsgate did as well. I wonder if each ending will be like a character ending like it was before. Will I be getting with some random girl? Because that's kind of what the last game was. Each girl had their own ending. There was the Muri ending, the Luca ending, the Ferris ending, the Karisu ending. <laughs> Dara didn't get an ending because he ain't, he ain't a pretty kawaii girl. Fuck him. <laughs> that's right. Only the girls get endings. Oh yeah, the Sua, Sua ending as well. Uh, Muri made a weird noise as soon as she heard that name. <laughs> I mean, we already know that Miyuri did, I mean, she, she does love uh, Okabe. Oh, now we actually get a full view of him. Ooh, yeah, he looks... Okabe, that is, that's sad, Okabe. <laughs> he went, that's all what you guys say. He went from mad scientist to sad scientist. <laughs> uh, just wearing all black all the time. Constant warning. Katsumi had met him many times. He was tall, but always looked pale and thin. Whenever he laughed, he seemed kind of sad. But from what Miri said, until just half a year ago, he'd been a totally different person. She said he was haughty and arrogant, but also kind and a great leader. Miri was known to let her emotions influence her judgment, so Katsumi didn't know mu how much of that description was accurate. I mean, I feel like, can we just, like, say that, like, he's... Had went through a traumatic experience that messed him up. I don't have to say specifically, but like it would explain what like to people who maybe have met him before why he's so different. Hey, someone passed away, some real important to him. <laughs> Miyushi sounds intensify. Um, here he started to freak out even more after hearing the word boyfriend. She talks so slowly. It's so it's so funny. Mata mata. <laughs> yada yada. <laughs> Everyone's at the exact same time. You can cut it. We're buying it either. Honestly, Okuri and Miyuri seem more like an old wedded couple that have been together for years than boyfriend and girlfriend. I I'd say probably more like brother and sister. I think that's what. Pro I think Okabe sort of sees her more as like a younger sibling. I think, but. Miri absolutely loves Okabe, so. Oh, And she's already so accepting, like, ah. Uh, Alright, fine. Okabe can have Karisu, but then can I have Miri, please? <laughs> <laughs> Miri sounded totally unconcerned, which made Katsumi even more surprised. So, so no? But she's dead. Mm. Who, who could have guessed? It was Yuki, the eldest, who spoke first. She's the oldest, okay. 
なんか余計なこと言っちゃったううん、うん、マユシーとオカリンは幼なじみで仲良しさんっていうだけだから大丈夫だよそう Yuri's smile seemed very sad to Katsumi. She felt the sudden impulse to give her schoolmate a hug. Aww. Yeah, she, like, I mean, it, it, we, we saw the mirror's ending, right? Like, I mean, it, it, honestly, it's pretty obvious. You kind of knew it. All, all these girls kind of love Okabe, but Miyuri, like, cherishes Okabe. And if Okabe said, yeah, I, I, like, I would want to go out with her or something, Miyuri would be like, hell yeah! Boyfriend! Mira smiled and walked over to Yuki as if to blow away the awkwardness. <laughs> Coming to the party? Oh. <laughs> Not yet, you don't! I cannot wait to see how the fuck Dara manages to score this chick, alright? He's just gonna go over and be like, Oh, you're, t you're my tootie waffle, I love you! Ah! <laughs> so? <laughs> Japanese girls love making that sound, don't they? <laughs> is it are they really saying what or are they just making a sound and it's for some reason being translated as what <laughs> I thought Nani is what right I mean there's probably more than one way to say what but but you should it just go eh! <laughs> is that really a word how do I spell that first Miyuri and then Yuki Katsumi was stunned Miri started to fidget. Huh? Oh no! Wait, wait, did she already know? Did Suzuha tell her? Or did she just figure it out herself with her big Miri brain? <laughs> oh my god! No! Miri, if you force it, it's not gonna happen! Has she? I guess she's met Dara before? <laughs> Preferred a gentleman. Oh, look at Dara's got a new look, too. Oh, well, I guess that this, act, this game was likely done by the same artist. You can sort of tell from the, the irises. But this game was done, like, three or five years after the last game, so... Uh, just the, the styles changed a bit. I see. The man that Katsumi and Kani were assaulting was Itara Shida, a college student and a member of Miyuri's club. He was a hardcore otaku, one of the hybrid types, who he said he enjoyed both 2D and three-dimensional girls. <laughs> oh, kitty face! Ah! Oh, God, no, the kitty face doesn't work on you at all, Daru. And like Hatsumi had said, he was a perverted gentleman. He would say perverse things all day without the slightest shame. Whip out his dick and slap people in the face with it. Whenever you told him he was a pervert, he would say, No, I'm a perverted gentleman! He was a dangerous guy. But Yuki didn't seem bothered. She actually looked a little looked a little sad. Um, Hashida san wa ii hito da kedo. Nante yu ka. Are you kidding me? You have boobs! That's exactly what he likes! We were shocked far above and beyond her usual limit. She was so surprised she let go of her suitcase's handle and let it fall to the ground. Instead of picking it up, she started talking frantically. <laughs> hmm. Okay, they must have already met then. I mean, 
夏コミまで初めて会った時もそんな感じだったでしょ Oh, okay, here we go. Flashback! Yuki had, had met Miuri four months ago at Summer Komima. Katsumi and Kaede had come wearing outfits Miuri made. Kaede found Yuki at the convention hall all by herself and they met up. After, afterward, they all, they'd all gone to a party where she'd met Miuri's friend, Ataro Ishida. Katsumi had definitely witnessed Yuki and Ataro having a currently conversation. Ever since then, Yuki, Miuri, and Daru had become friends. And Yuki had started going to Miuri's club, the Future Gadget Club. Uh, oh, okay. So, all right, she's already been there a few times. In other words, Yuki and Atara had been talking ever since Summer Komima. But still, Yuki chuckled sadly and shook her head. Hmm. <laughs> Oh. That's why she doesn't want to go. <laughs> like a little sister. Haha, <laughs> gross. Oh God! No! <laughs> Mira goes. Eh! <laughs> no! God! No! Yuki, you're fucking up the timeline. Don't you get it? Okay, I'm gonna. I'm starting to think. I'm thinking Futurama levels are fucked up. What if? What if that did happen? Would well, that mean Suzuha is her own mommy? <laughs> oh, now you care about the timeline, Mister. I, my own grandfather. <laughs> Oh my god! I fucking love that moment in Futurama. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> For some reason, Miri looked like she was about to cry and be similar. Oh, she vomited on me! She seemed to want to say something, but couldn't bring herself to. Her lips were quivering. Mayuri-chan? <laughs> <laughs> he is she not very good at keeping secrets. But it certainly didn't look like nothing. Kasumi couldn't bear to watch her anymore. So she gave in to her impulses. Alright, time to... Time to go for a hug, right? Okay, somebody stuck behind Miuri and started to tickle, tickle under her arms. She is. Wow, see, this is this is horny Chie. <laughs> this is Chie in another world line. Mira was laughing so hard she was crying, and this time Katsumi succeeded in giving her a hug. Even though they were in public, she started rub rubbing her cheek against her and squeezing her titties together. Oh, yes, good. We gotta get that beautiful CG. And if you get the true ending, you get this exact same scene, except they're in bikinis for some reason. So there's that one lesbian for <laughs> every fucking anime. Okay, yeah, it's like this look you forever. Ah, uh, and we're just gonna shake that off like, oh, you're just such a you're such a funny friend. That might be a red flag mirror. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're like just moments like this where this, this, this uh, series in particular becomes insanely anime. <laughs> a lot of times it has really strong story moments and, you know, character moments and things like that. And then there are moments where it's just like, fuck this, strike the fan service, here we go! Where you're trying to run away, but Fubuki grabbed her and started to kiss her all over. <laughs> Start making out with her. <sighs> <laughs> ah, ah, so much dry humping! <laughs> In the end, Katsumi kept clinging to Miri until they reached the station. She felt a lot better, but catching Miri when she tried to escape uh, used up a lot of energy. Either way, now she, <laughs> now that she was satisfied. Oh. Hey, Miyuri, remember that time I threw you in front of a fucking moving train? <laughs> oh, God. What a wonderful ending that was. She shuddered and turned back towards Miyuri as an image came into her mind from out of nowhere. How the fuck did she see that? Was she a witness to when that happened? Mayushi. Huh? Nani? Nani? へへ。この前話したよ。冬コミマはね、マユシーは作る方に専念します。それでもいいからさ、とにかく冬コミマもこの4人で絶対一緒に参加しよう。ね。当たり前だよ。そのために今日みんなで買い物したんだよ。
その度に私や楓ちゃんは泣いて泣いてでもどうすることもできなくて<笑>夕べ見た夢なんか最悪だった。私たちの目の前で突然マユシーが倒れて動かなくなっちゃうの。Oh, she keeps getting. She's seeing all the different ones. She's seeing right in front of us. That's what happened with Akabe at one point. There's like one point where she just sort of like has a heart attack or something. そのマユシーをね、オカリンさんが悲鳴を上げながら抱きしめて。So Fubuki was there for that scene? I don't. I don't think so, though. Although she did say she collapsed in front of us. Maybe this is a different world line of where they were with her at the time. Similarly,、uh, another world line where she died in、uh, front of the train where they were. Kind of giving Asume a gentle shoulder hug. Kanae's words make Katsumi calm down a little. She's glad to have an older friend like this. Yeah, only. Not in this visual novel. Only good things in this one. Her hands squeeze Katsumi's shoulder tightly. Being held like this makes Katsumi feel a lot better. Got superpowers! But at night she had the nightmares again. Oh, now switching to Zuzuha. <laughs> well, I heard switching perspectives a lot. It's weird. I, it's so weird, though. I, I guess just that she would have, be having Steins Gate like that. It just seems weird that she's. Well, one, that she'd be getting recurring dreams like that, her in particular. And two, again, I didn't think she was there for any of these scenes. These are scenes that we'd seen before, but I, I suppose it's just a, possible, a possibility that there was a timeline where they were there for it. But I, I don't know. I don't know if there's something else significant to it. Like, she's got a power like, Oka,、uh, like o- Okabe, except she can see things that even she wasn't there for. I, I don't know.、Uh, Suzu Amani was about to run out of patience. The cause was the young man in the room with her, her father. Hitara Ishida, aka Daru. His massively obese body was leaning forward over a computer monitor and he had a dopey grin on his face. Ah, ah, ah. He was jacking off again and it was disturbing Suzuha. Dad, at least let me leave the room when you do this shit. No,、oh, it feels better once I'm being watched. Ah! <laughs> he finally got up around 11 a.m., gulped down three cups of instant ramen, and now is surfing the internet. Me.、Mm. Oh, God. Okay. Let's, see, let's get another listen to Dar's voice here. Let's see if I can、uh, stomach this. Hmm? Uh? Uh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't know what this guy is going for, honestly. I guess he's just trying to, like, make him sound as nerdy as possible. I mean,. I mean, be fair, no one sounds like the nerdy voice I get for like Mushurige and shit, but I, it's just, it's unusual just because I don't usually hear it in like official dubs for things. Look, he sounds like this when he talks. Wait, no, I'm in my top. Okay, uh, Parthenon. A female freelance illustrator. She probably does illustrations for Nico Nia and Vocalo songs. Most popular with young women. That's probably based off a real person. Uh, Normies Must Die P. A, vocal, a vocalo producer, two of his videos have exceeded over a million views. Popular for the unique worlds he builds with his lyrics. As his name suggests, many of his songs criticize Normies or criticize himself for not having any friends. 
His songs are a source of support for viewers in similar dire straits. Yes. リアルに読めるとか来てない来てなすぎるでかいでもおまけ my favorite thing, that's almost as good as Twatter. The name of a microblogging so blogging software app allows for tweets up to 140 characters. No, they doubled that actually. Thank God. I for it to be used as a chat program. It only took them 84 years. Uh, my dad. I wear gloves on the inside to look cool. Like, so she says sort of like a, like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> he talks. Well, uh, well, hey there, honey. How are you doing today? Oh. That's just as who I called her father. You see, it was who he was after all, so there was nothing else to call him. Suzuo was a time traveler from the year 2036. So seven years from now, he would become her father. <laughs> In fact, his PC desk was covered with snacks. She cleaned it regularly, but it never seemed to make a difference. So I realized she was complaining more than usual, but she had to say it anyway. Then she realized that Itaro wasn't even listening to her. His eyes were fixed on the computer monitor. He moved his mouse out of sight, but she could still hear him clicking it. Ah! Zu approached her father from behind and put the hairspray can she had been hiding up to his neck. You wanna die, old man? I ain't afraid to kill my father, alright? I came for the future, alright? I fought in World War Three. You know how many people I killed? I've lost fucking cowboys, boy! No, honey, please! Spare me! You're gonna die, old man! Mutara <laughs> seemed to think it was a gun. He st stuck his hands up. Threats like this worked. They worked because she told him that she survived the Third World War and that war, war is in chaos in 2036. And that she was ready to draw a gun and pull the trigger whenever she needed to. <laughs> you ain't my father! You're nothing but an empty shell! Of a man! Hey, yeah, you know what? I, 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 I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Daru, if everyone, everyone else is great. Yours is fucking weird. So I'm fucking voicing that. <laughs> there you go, people. Well, I'll at least be voicing one character here. This motherfucker. Daru, you sound fucking terrible. Well, I don't know what time to eat real food, right? And there's the time difference with overseas clients. So sometimes I'm like up all night. <laughs> そんなことばっかり言って母さんに叱られてた。百歩譲って睡眠周期は仕方ないとしても、これ以上健康を損ねるような食事は許容範囲外。即刻中止すること。いい？But works hard, and so the time machine research. I need to relax. Ah, I need my tootie waffles, please. Don't take it away from me. You're a fat, lazy fuck, Dad! So I was always amazed that her dad managed to survive the future's wars. But since the time machine research would affect the future, and eventually Suzuo's very presence here, she couldn't tell him to stop. Even after Rintaro Kabe stopped coming to the future gadget lab, 
And Tara kept working on the time machine all by himself. You feel like her presence here would, like, totally fuck up her existence, right? Zua never said a word about it. If she did, it might create a time paradox. But, but telling Daru that you're his daughter doesn't create a time paradox. How? <laughs> exactly. Decided to warn him again. Well, I know that, but besides, I'll lose confidence. Can I really make a time machine? Yeah, because that would create a uh, a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? It would create, like, like if you base it off the thing that you made, where then you're just simply basing off the thing that you already did, and that wouldn't make any sense, right? And now suddenly, that if that's your driving motive, then that thing shouldn't exist to begin with. And the whole fucking universe collapses. Okay. Zua took the hairspray can off his neck. Hey, I was sure it was a gun, and it wasn't. How can you trick your own dad? P please don't. <laughs> Zoo put the can of hairspray back on the shelf. It was something Rintaro Akabe had left here when he'd lived in the lab. It was still here since its owner never came back for it. You know, in manga and video games, it's always really cute when a girl scolds her dad. Mm. Zua, Zua, can you try to say, ah, oh, geez, don't do that, Papa, in a really sweet voice if you can. What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? <sighs> No, never mind. Her dad shrank from Suzuki's glare. <sighs> Why is this a thing in Japan? Zua sighed loudly and dropped herself on the sofa next to Mr. Upa. She leaned back against the headrest and stared at the ceiling, then closed her eyes. What's wrong? Mm -hmm. You can't hide, hide from me. Well, you say it's nothing. That means I want you to listen to me, right? No, it means nothing, Dad! Fuck up! Come on, tell me. I'm your young, hot father. <laughs> I will never look this good again. Dar sounded very serious. Sue's eyes went wide for a moment, but then she realized. Ah ha! Uh, no! <laughs> uh, oh, a computer lingo, a type of foreshadowing that means a common trope is about to occur. For example, an XXX flag means this thing in the future Future XX will happen. Death flags and love flags are common examples. No! I'm raising my love flag for you, honey! Oh! She'd been living here for three months. She was starting to learn a little about Akiobar's culture, circa 2010. Well, I'm not. I wouldn't do that to my own daughter. Or would I? Uh, uh. What the fuck, man? Like, why? Why is this even, like, being joked about in this game? Like, I get it. I get it. Different cultures, but why is this a thing in this culture? <laughs> what? That's scary. I never do that, honey. ハタシは軍属だったし、父さんはタイムマシンの開発に追われてたから、いつも一緒にいられるわけじゃなかったけど、とにかくベタベタしてきたよ。鬱陶しいくらいにね。Her dad lo looked honestly depressed, and, then, and she realized that she'd gone too far. Really? You? No, yeah, Suzu yeah uh, right, Suzuwa has gone too far. Okay. Tosan-san,いつも私に言ってくれてたよ。ここは最低最悪の世界線だけど、私が誕生したことだけは最高だって。私、未来の父さんを失望させたくないんだ。だから。it's okay. I'll never be disappointed. Nah, just kidding. 
Yeah. Well, he's kind of been scarred for life, honey. Stein's Gate. Stein's Gate. Stein's Gate. That was the name of the mysterious world line her dad had told her about in 2036. World War Three might not occur. Leading Rintaro Akabe to that world line was her mission. But right now, it wasn't going well. Zua had come to 2010, and it, it just like the mission had called for, she succeeded in sending Rintaro Akabe to July 28th. But then he failed, and he wasn't going to try again. Every time they met, she tried to convince him, but who knew if her words were having any effect? <laughs> Oh, that's right. That's how that, that works. That, like, you, you can have world, multiple world lines, but they can actually converge on each other and to form to like to a major world line. I kind of forgot that that's how this whole time travel thing in Science Gate worked. Suzu had something else she had to do here in Akihabara in December 2010. Besides convincing Rintaro Akabe, and it meant she was running around every day. The exhaustion was starting to take its toll on her. What, was it to get her and Dara together? During the war, she'd been able to keep herself sharp at all times, and this level of exhaustion wouldn't have meant anything. The relaxed atmosphere of 2010 was actually making her realize how tired she was. She was feeling very sleepy right now, actually. She was surprised how willing she was to fall asleep in such an undefended position, but she didn't think she could beat the temptation. And then suddenly, she felt something extremely cold on the back of her neck. <coughs> she snapped awake in an instant. Her movements afterwards, after that, were lightning quick. She jumped up and slipped behind the massive body in front of her, which obviously belonged to, uh, to, to, to Itaru, then grabbed his arm and twisted it as she dropped him to the floor. She went to draw the gun in her hip, and her head swiped through empty air. Then she came back to reality. Her gun was hidden. She wasn't carrying it. This was a 2036. What was he doing? Two cans of Dr. P clattered, clattered on the floor. Oh, that must have been what he put on her neck. I got you, Dr. Pable. Getting you back. What? Ah, took you out, Dad. That I would never be born. Fine, just let me go. This really hurts. Suzu, I let her father go. Ow. Atara rubbed his arm and stood up, then grabbed the cans of Dr. P off the floor. He offered one to Suzua. Anyway, you're giving up too soon. Keep at it a little longer. I think Okarine's just tired and sleeping. Put some cold Dr. P up to his neck like I, ju like I just did, and he'll wake up. I mean, it's Okarine we're talking about. She realized her dad was trying to cheer her up and nodded. Then she heard footsteps come up the stairs and some slightly off keep humming. It's me, is she? <gasps> Their eyes met. Just the sound was enough to tell them who it was. Funny, I can actually hear Dar's voice there for a second, I guess because it must be a single sound bite of them talking at the same time. Hi, Zuzua. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. So it moved fast, even faster than when she knocked her father to the ground. She quickly and silently jumped behind the curtain that was separated the lab's development room from the rest of it. Just as she had beneath the desk, there was a knock at the door. Zua knew that voice, of course. It was her mom. She could tell from the noises he was making that her dad was panicking. Oh, there was another knock. Right, right, I'm coming. Atara went to open the door. Zua took a deep breath and concentrated her mind. 
She remembered the time she spent three days and three nights on a battlefield with no field and food and nothing to drink, constantly aiming her rifle at the target. She erased any trace of her presence that could give her away. Was... Oh, do they not, like, want her to think that she was, like, with Daru or something? I guess they don't know that she's actually living there. Her breathing started to become shallow. Dad, don't screw this up, okay? I swear to God. Well, Mani, Manishi, you're meeting Miyushi? Yushi today? Ataru came back into the room with a girl. She could hear plastic bags, ra bags rustling. She must have brought the ingredients. Well, Yushi's not here yet. Yuki Amane. Just as the n name Amane suggested, she was Suzuha's mother in the future. In other words, the two of them in the other room were supposed to get married. Well, if you two were supposed to meet, I'm sure she'll get here eventually, right? Well, of course. You're going to be cooking here, right? I don't know if I want to eat Miyushi's cooking. <laughs> uh, I don't believe you. You're lying. You're lying to me. Atara was clearly nervous. As far as Suzuha knew, the only girl he acted that way around was Yuki, Yuki Amane. Suzuha and Miyuri were practically family, and he got along fine with Big Sis Rumi. Ferris Nyan Nyan, who worked at the maid cafe next door. So it wasn't that he didn't know how to act around girls, but for some reason he always acted different when she was around. She told him that Yuki would be his wife someday. Oh, well wait a fuck it, why? Seriously, okay, so Suzuha did tell him. What the fuck, are you out of your mind? You, you think, you see, you see future Trunks telling Bulma that he was your, the son from the future and that he was, she was gonna fuck Vegeta one day. Yeah, let me just go ahead and fuck up my existence. That's a great way to, <laughs> So it was like, I don't give a shit. That, this is, that's exactly what this Suzuha is. I am zero shit giving Suzuha here. It was too late to do anything about it now, but maybe that was a mistake, she thought. You think? Well, uh, 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 yeah. Oh, is he saying that Sir, this Suzuha's her sister? His sister? Itarashi's sister was none other than Suzuha herself. Around the same time Suzuha had started spending all her time in the lab, Yuki had become friends with Miyuri and Ataru and began visiting more frequently. Which meant that avoiding her was almost impossible, and so she was forced to tell Yuki that she was Ataru's little sister. But still, she'd wanted to keep the contact to a minimum in order to keep Yuki from finding out somehow. That was why she was hiding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, why the fuck is this bombshell after freaking Daru? Look at it. I'm not saying nerds or dorks don't deserve love, but it's fucking Daru, okay, guys? <laughs> He's done some creepy weird shit. I guess that's her cake, right? But I like creepy weird shit. You can show no signs of noticing Suzuha. She was twirling around the center of the room as if she was a, at a fashion show. Yuki was a cosplayer and wanted as many people as possible to see her dressed up. Yuri had told Suzuha that, that once before. In fact, Yuki and Yuri spent a lot of time complimenting each other's outfits. Oh, uh, yup, it's great, really great. It's like, whoa, an angel for the win. Ah. <laughs> I'll be Darth Mater. Ah. Uh oh. <laughs> May not convince him to lose weight, right? Gotta get hunky for your cosplay wafu. Atara and Ishida, Yuki, and, y and Yuki Yamane. As she listened to their awkward conversations, Suzuha remembered the last time she said goodbye to her dad. Oh, 2036. Back to the future! I hear the guns! Mansabashi, one of the bridges of the south side of Ikiyabara that crosses over the Kondo River. 
which means it's only a matter of time until they find this place. I guess the false information I like I like didn't do us any good. Yeah, I'm opening it up. Come on inside. Oh, Miyuri's there too. Future Miyuri. Can we see what they look like? A little bit. Dara's not named less fat. Who the hell is that? Oh my god, is that baby Karisu? <laughs> Somehow? Did wait. It's like is that Karisu's sister or like daughter or something? The room is almost totally empty and covered from top to bottom in soundproofing materials. Not only were there no windows, there wasn't even a door to the hallway. The building they were in was once a symbol of the old Akihabara, before it was almost entirely destroyed by an air raid during the last days of the Third World War. Only a few people knew about the secret room inside. The biggest reason was its, was its secret, the silhouette of what looked like a satellite sitting in the corner. Oh, Kagari. Hmm. Zu so spoke to the little girl clutching Miyuri's hand. Most of the children in this era had skin inflammation somewhere in their body from all the radioactive rain, but she didn't. Her name was K uh Oh, Kagiri Kagari Shina. Oh, Miyuri's daughter? Her registration form says she was 10 years old, but no one knew if that was true. She was an orphan who'd lost her parents in the Tokyo Air Raids when she was a baby, and no one even knew her birthday. Oh, okay. But come on. The, okay, the resemblance to her and Karisu, though, is uncanny, right? So, connect, some connection to her. Did Karisu survive in this? But no, she, it, it, she didn't, right? That's how the Third World War came around. So, it seems like it should be impossible that this girl would be Karisu's daughter. But never discount anything in Stein's game, right? There are no coincidences. The name Kagari had been given to her by Miyuri, who was working at the child welfare center that had taken her in. She took her in from the word, the word ka Kagaribi, meaning bonfire, and hoped that she could be a light even in these dark days. It had been four years since Miyuri had adopted her, and her name of, on the registration form had become Kagari Shina. <laughs> Kind of sounds like uh, Musi's voice actress is actually voicing her as well. That's it. Sort of sounded like it. So, <laughs> am I right? Suzu so motioned for the Sheenas to step back and put her right hand and right eye up to the machine sensor. The biometrics checked clear and the hatch slid open. Use a finger point, print, voice recognition, booga booga booga. She went inside and fastened herself into the seat. We've never done a man jump of this length before. But the technology's just fine. Just do it like the test jumps. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Suzuha began to flip switches, working her way through the startup procedure. She practiced it hundreds of times in preparation for this day. The faint rumble from the machine began to get louder. According to the data, the spot we're in now was the roof of the old radio building. There's a gap of about a meter, so when you land there, there's going to be an impact. Okay. A time machine could move through time, but not space. To arrive at the radio building more than 60 years in the past, she needed to launch from right here. Even if something happens, stay calm. Remember your training. Her words must have meant a lot to him because she stuck he stuck out his lip towards her. She squished them back with, with his with her hand. Well, that makes me sad. Do you not like your daddy, Zua? Of course I do. I'm a fucking weirdo. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. Think of my own daughter that way. God, Dar's such a fucking weirdo. Her mother wasn't here. She became a victim of the war, brutally killed by the peacekeeping squads. Damn it! Cosplay couldn't save her after all. Don't take my joke seriously, please. 
Matsuo's voice sounded kind of disappointed. She set the destination for August 13th, 1975. Her first mission was there. She's about to say goodbyes, but then... House from the roof. They're coming in. <laughs> Zua drew her gun from her holster. She's about to get out of the time machine, but her dad stopped her. No, just go. Go back to the past. <laughs> we fine. Just go, Zua. <laughs> it's all right. My fat, my fat will protect me. Muyushi, get K Kagari in there. There's room for another person in here. Miriam Suzuma's father picked up the stunned Kagari and stuffed her into the time machine. Wait, what? I remember seeing her on the roof of the building with Suzuma, though. If Suzuma's mission was succeeded, the world line would be rebuilt, and it was likely that the present Kagari would cease to exist. It might have been pointless to send, send her. Oh. But even so, a mother wants her child to live. That's how Suzuo's mom was, too. Mama. Kagari, Kagari finally seemed to understand what was going on. She called out to her mom. <laughs> Funny, actually, you still can't see either of their faces fully, though. Miri handed Kagari a tiny keychain. Looked old, but it may have been may have been a brightly colored green once, but now is completely faded. Aww. Oh my god, the Emerald Upa! The most powerful of all Upas! Mascot character of the Rynet Kakuru anime. Dog life virtual pet with an egg shaped cylindrical body and short stubby arms and legs. Comes in many different colors. It can't talk, but it can't communicate by crying Upa. Upa! Aww. What a redhead baby! Once it was pressed firmly into Kagari's hands, she stepped back. Miri was smiling, but weeping at the same time. Aww. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're being a tough love mom. <laughs> Gari fell silent immediately. Even Suzuha had never heard Miura use that tone of voice. That's how harshly she scolded her daughter. Gari was quietly weeping, unmoving. I'm closing the hatch! It's time the hatch really did begin to close. The inside of the machine and the outside of it. Two worlds were about to become completely cut off from one another. Whether Suzuha's mission was successful or not, she would probably never see any of them again. Tell him, don't give up, no matter what, you moron! You fucking baka! Okie dokie. And then the door was sealed shut, and Miri and Ataro's voices disappeared, along with the chaos outside. Tosa? Daisuke? Aww. Oh. She whispered towards the door, now sealed shut. Ikuyo! Kagari! Kagari! Kakoe! Wucha!
Gotta get back. Suzuwa chan. Watcha! She blew up the time machine. Then where did what happened to her? Right, where where'd she go? She's still around? Like Suzua hiding her somewhere? Zua snapped back to reality. Yuki was getting closer to the development room she was hiding in. Oh well, I man, it's right behind the curtain. Oh crap! Oh, I'll get it. Hitara motioned for her to stop, then quickly slid into the room. As he reached down to pick out the vacuum off the floor, his gaze locked with Suzua as she hit under the desk. Okie dokie! Oh, y yes! Evidently, Yuki was trying to be nice by cleaning up. The place was pretty messy right now. Knowing Yuki's personality, Suzuwa could imagine she'd want to clean it. Hitara grabbed what looked like a vacuum cleaner off the floor and left the development room. Future gadget number five! Oh my god! Once again, I've made a worthless object by Goemon! <laughs> Goemon! I'll end it! The future gadget of your dreams by connecting a dryer and a vacuum. It uses the exhaust from the vacuum in the dryer. The name comes from the famous anime about a phantom thief, <laughs> Lupin the Third, i.e. Lupin the Third. If you take it apart, you can use it as a normal vacuum. Uh. <laughs> Suzy could be so fucking stupid. You, you, you think so? Oh my god, for some reason this girl is thirsty for Dar. <laughs> I don't know why, but okay. Well, I just. Ah! Tar started to panic again, suicide. <laughs> so it's like, I, I don't know why Suzuwa, like, okay, she told her dad, all right, fine. Why did she tell him that this, that she was uh, her mother? Like, just, I, don't, I don't even understand that at all. お部屋の掃除はできれば毎日した方がいいですよ。ここ特に誇りっぽいですし、それだけじゃありません。食事のこともそうです。今日もカップ麺だったんでしょう。Well, how would you know? I see curses! Oh, well, I do try to watch it, you know. あんまりカップ麺やお菓子ばかり食べてると病気になっちゃいますよ。あと、少しは運動すること。Hmm, you know, it's interesting. I'm I do know that there are some some women out there who who like to find men and sort of fix them And that might be what this sort of is a little bit like not saying that they don't love their, you know uh, their spouse or whatever, but You know, sometimes people will find like other people who are kind of messed up and then they like They feel fulfilled in a lot of ways by helping them fix the problems in their own life, you know uh, Like find a guy and fix them up I think it's exactly the best uh, motivation or reason to uh, be with someone. Hopefully, there are other reasons for doing that, but uh, but uh, that is a thing. So that might be what's going on here. <laughs> Yukimane was saying the exact same thing that Zuzu had just said. Perhaps they really were mother and child. Zuzu just beginning to feel a little homesick when she sensed another visitor coming or approaching. Door to the lab open and, gr and a greeting she'd heard many times before resounded throughout the room. Where'd she get that t that catchphrase hers anyway? It's Miri coming to see Yuki, but there was another presence there too. 
岡部さんも一緒だったんですねおっおっ !We actually get to see him now! We get to see a portrait of him! Oh, Ogreen! It's been forever, man! You look as sad as ever! Oh. Oh. That's interesting. That definitely, this definitely never happened in the other game. We stuck at his point of view the entire time. There's never a point where he was in a scene and we weren't, like, reading his thoughts. We heard her, his voice. Suzua grabbed her, ground her teeth a little. Son of a bitch! Oh, switching back to him now again. <sighs> okay, guys. Well, this seems like a good place to end things here for now, then. That's been a few days later, too. December 5th. It's interesting. I, I'm glad they actually showed, um, like, Suzuha going back to the past. But now we have this other girl, Kagari. What happened to her? Why did we see her after she arrived? Did she lose her somehow? Was she in there, but she never came out of the time machine and just popped out later? And if that's the case, where is she now? So many questions. And again, who is she? Is she... She looks so much like uh, Karisu here, so it seems like... I mean, it could be that's just a, a red herring, right? To make us think that, but it's not really a connection. But I I wouldn't be surprised if there is some connection. Just because, off the top of my head, I couldn't think of how she would be Karisu's daughter. But Stein's Gate will find a way. But anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite. And subscribe if you're not already become Piggy Penguin. For this LP... Where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy! Bernie, are you naked? Yes, I'm naked. I just, <laughs> I just had a bath. Just gave her a bath and <laughs> as usual, I mean, she's honestly really very good with her bath, but afterwards she always gets really crazy. She's like, oh my God. Daddy, I'm Nikki and I, I'm crazy. Ah. I know you're naked and crazy, but you're also squeaky clean. I know I don't like it. I like it better when I'm dirty. Oh my goodness. Oh. Now drag me low on the floor and get me dirty again, Daddy. <laughs> oh my goodness. I will say she's a really a very smelly dog, like at all. And I'm guessing it's probably just because of the short hair. But yeah, like she, she does not like stink up the house or anything at all. But I still want to give her a bath, uh, you know, fairly frequently, make sure she stays nice and hygienic and, you know, smelling good for the other dogs that she meets on the street. But they like it better when I stink, Daddy. I know, I know. Ooh. Anything you want to tell the penguins, Bernie? Yes. Remember. Your hygiene is important. Do you remember to always wash your hair and scrub your, your private areas and also to brush your teeth every day. Thank you, Bernie. Very wise words. Okay. I'll see you all later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.